Welcome everyone towards a comparison between Sword Burst Online and Sword Burst 2. A lot of you seem to be enjoying part 1, so I thought, why not record part 2 right away? In today's episode, we're gonna explore the first real floor that you will enter in the game of SPO and SP2. But something really funny actually, like a lot of people actually didn't notice it. This is actually called Floor 2, because Floor 1 is the town floor, but in SP2... Floor 1 is Arcadia, but it also is the floor outside of it where you can fight a mob. So there's a little bit of a difference in it, but in original standards, this is really just Floor 1 because it's the first real floor you will enter. So the first thing we're gonna do is just explore this floor and see how it looks like. Also, if you're wondering why are there no other players, well, I'm playing in a VIP server because there are exploiters and exploiters everywhere in the open public surface and I simply do not want to deal with them right now so we got a VIP server and here we go so basically when you start in the spa you will see a massive structure over there and a fun fact the boss room is actually behind there also underneath the map somewhere there is actually a hidden beta boss area so, if you want to see that, you can go there by no clipping and flying or desyncing yourself with lag switch upon joining the game. But something really cool of this, of course, is that there is a beach over there. Sadly enough, there are no crabs spawning, but in the SP2 version, they do spawn at the beach. So, the first mob you're going to meet is, of course, a ball. We're going to check out how the ball looks like. And you now can finally see how dated everything is in this game. Like, the mobs... Some of them are really really dated and everything is just so empty like you would suspect Oh, there would be so many more things like you would remember it with way more trees But if you look at it now, it is really really empty We got a small camp over there it would have been cool if there would have been a boar mini boss over here But we do not have that but a lot of people would probably know if you turn a right over here you will see some wolves. Wolves also spawn over there and all the way over here. Because that will be the second mob you will fi be fighting. You mainly want to have a dual wield weapon or at least level 4 before you take on any of these wolves. But I'm, you know, one of the highest levels in the game. And yes, they did reach the level cap. But I basically did not really go for that. And we got the first mini boss over here. I wonder if we can get one of those drops. But our inventory is full. But we don't really care. We are just going to go for the kill. And we only only got the you know just the normal stuff and this game actually made a ui pop-up and showcase it to every single player in the server that you got a certain drop so you could get a lot of hate for that but you could also get a lot of awesome trade requests also there is a little bit of a small hiccup in the map but it's also a really good trading area and it's funny how you hit actually some wolves over here they actually tumble over and once your inventory is full, you're gonna keep getting that pop-up. But over here is a small hidden area. You can do some awesome private trades over there back in the day. Or have some private 1v1s. Because a lot of people did not know of that area. And it made it a really, really willing area if you knew about it. Like, I was one of the first people who always went there. Then more people came. And oh my goodness, I actually realized how big the aggro range is right now of these wolves. And they just simply don't stop trying but we are just gonna move on from the wolf area and we're not gonna answer the boss tower because there's a something that still questions me to this date and i want everyone's opinion about this in the comments behind the tower there is a gorgeous gorgeous map that we cannot access why can we not go here why is this here and why do we not play in here? Because it's in the game, yet we do not play in it because, see, invisible barrier. And that makes it so sad because it looks so awesome. Like, imagine the map would have been like this. Like, full with trees. This game could have survived at least for another year or maybe even to, to dates if you just updated the mobs and the exploits and new content. Because look at how pretty it looks like. I think this game... Look at that. There's even a grand tree behind there. I think 
This surfer would have been so much more amazing if we had that behind. At least we could have entered it and gone into it or something like that. But sadly enough, we don't. But anyway, we're gonna go towards the boss tower and hopefully I still remember the maze because it has been more than a year, I think, maybe even two years since the last time I entered this dungeon. But anyway, once you teleport over, you have no audio, but only your music changes over for the sake of nostalgia. We're gonna keep the audio sound because I remember we did not get any copyright for that back in the day. So let's hope we do not get any of that right now either. So I remember we have to stick to the left side and mainly stick with the left and then we should get that and we got one of these sentinels they would sometimes actually get behind you and as a lower level you're gonna get in massive massive problems with these dudes because they love to pack some a big big damage but yeah it's just sad to see like there are no textures on these trees like now you re just notice it there are no textures on that but yeah, if you play this game, there are just so many exploiters because the exploits are so easy now. It's just so outdated. You can use the run admin command and all that kind of stuff. And it's a little bit sad, but that's sadly enough what the game has fallen to. But if you have 200 Robux to spare and you want to have some nostalgia trip, definitely spend that. Definitely do it because it is 100% worth it. But we are taking the right path, if I'm correct. We did not heal. Well, we did heal, but it did not show up. There was also a UI glitch back in the day. But yeah, like in this game, we do have some awesome stats, but I will go into that later in the future because, you know, right now we're mainly focusing about the flaws and later on we're going to focus about some other things in this series because, you know, a lot of you guys really, really enjoyed seeing that. So yeah, it's awesome to see that there's still so much love and support for these kind of videos. And this video will be decently long because we're gonna go all the way to the boss and kill him before we're gonna enter the next one. And for that game, it counts basically the same. We are gonna go all the way in and we're basically maybe gonna run in a studio surf for just to get a little bit of peace and give the solo experience a little bit of a better go because the solo experience is better sometimes than the team experience but anyway we have reached the area because a lot of people could actually in the beginning not find this because it's just so difficult to see and then you're like oh, I found it oh, I found doors what is this oh my god and then you enter this area and then the music changed guys Alex has removed the copyright of music because that's a new rule on Roblox and this music was apparently heavily copyrighted that means we now got this um, yeah tunes I don't know but it's funny to see because the music used to be different so your experience will be not as great and that's sad as well at the same time because you will never experience the biggest thing and now look at the Cobalt King he is still a worthy opponent even for level 45 with his minions because he still survives decently long and he can deal some damage but there we go we got the kill we got some Orkanor don't drop that Orkanor hey! Don't drop that Orkanor. Who remembers that meme? That used to be a meme, yeah. But then you finally reached this, you killed the boss, and then you could go to floor three. So that has been floor two. We're gonna now move on towards SB2's floor one slash floor two, because this is also floor one slash floor two. Because, you know, it's a little bit odd in order. But everyone gets the memo. We're just gonna try to comparison most of the stuff. But anyway, guys, I will see you all there, basically. So, let's go to the next game. So, we have spawned in towards the first real floor where you can fight mobs in Sword Burst 2. The first thing you already have noticed is that the graphics and the amount of trees and other props are way and way higher. Also, if the game looks a tiny bit more like the height compared to width is a bit more the reason for that is in studio mode you cannot capture the complete game without having black bars so you have to change it a tiny bit in obs to make it completely fit and that is why it looks a tiny bit more 
like that but that is all we have to do with currently but anyway ignore all the offend things because those will be removed when this video is uploaded if i'm correct so let's move on so from the spawning area we once again have the beach line and this time we have some mobs over here and yes these mobs are actually animated because back in the day that was very very limited to do and the game overall decided not to do it but that is just something you want to keep in mind because the animated mobs make a game look way better and it's just funny to see that we now have a beach line with mobs on top of it even though the original also did that and not use any mobs there so we got some more boss over here and you're probably wondering why am I taking this path well there is also a dire wolf in this version of the game yes there are multiple direwolves in the universe of SB well SB basically sword bursts because that's a sort of its own universe but it's inspired by sword out line as many of you know but it is not a complete ripoff because you know if it's completely SEO it would have looked completely different but anyway we got some wolves over here you can also see the wolves overall look way and way more detailed and if you kill something now you no longer get a pop-up on the screen. You do see how much damage you dealt. And you see a hit marker and all that kind of stuff. When you did a crit, when you did a normal one. But now in the chat, you will see how much coins you got. And if you got a weapon drop. That's just perfect for the showcasing. And oh my lordy lordy. If you're the first person in the fresh surfer. You're gonna eat some craps. Come on, Mr. Crab. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, there's so many crabs now. And we got another drop over there, so our drop chances are going decently lucky. Also, in this game, we do have a thing called a boost. We're gonna go into that deeper in the future in comparison with the other game, because the other game did have boost. A lot of people probably wouldn't have known that, but that's gonna go in a completely different video to show the differences and the usage of how advanced that system became. And also, we got a chest over there. That's one of the newest additions of the game. You can find chests right now. And a chest will give you a random amount of fell. But anyway, you have to walk on a decent amount of well steps to actually get towards the mini boss because the mini boss used to be on a completely different position and it just made the game way easier and this actually makes you walk very far and also there is a third mob here that we were missing in SBO because in SBO these bears would have been amazing inside the foresty area and it would mean that that game would have free and this one has a or in the outside area because as you know there are no crabs at the beach of SBO. But anyway we have made it towards the end. We need to make some simple jumps over here. Then we can jump up here and whoa Wolfie Wolfie don't be so mean to Mr. Chesty. We got a nice amount of fell and there we go we got one of the wolves. Hello there. Dire wolf instant kill and that's basically it. We got some awesome scenery in the background and anyway we're gonna reset to go towards the beginning again because we're not gonna rewalk it completely so here we go so once again if you're wondering why are there no other players here this is a studio mode that only developers can access that basically means i'm in testing mode and it basically means i'm completely alone but look at the difference of this board look at that look at this board the board is animated looks overall way more up to date and it's still very, very low poly count. And polys basically mean the amount of well, polys, polygraphs, if, if I'm correct, that was the full name. The poly count is very important to keep low because the more polys you use, the more detailed something can look. But the more laggy it will be. And Roblox has a threshold of a set amount of polys and you definitely do not want to break those also if you maybe have noticed mobs actually walk around from left and right and they basically have a little bit of their own thing you can climb the wall up there on the staircase and you can take the path over there to the left but there is nothing really there and sadly enough this place has the same issue 
that the original has. And that is a massive, massive secret area. Sadly enough, I don't think we can access it anymore because the game did tune down a decent amount with them. So let's see if we can get on top of it. So anyway, once you teleport in, you do have some sound, you have a music change, and there we go. We got a lot of enemies spawning in. This is way more cluttered. You definitely do not want to go solo at a lower level because you are going to have a lot of issues. Most of the traps are indeed broken in the server because there used to be a lot of traps in here, and that made a lot of difference. So let's just take a lot of these minions with us, and we're going to take like one of those multi-multi kills because right now... If you can see, these dudes don't do any damage to me. They're, they're pathetically weak. Well, what happens if I kill all of them to the surfer? Well, glad you asked. <laughs> I'm glad you guys asked. Watch this. Hiya! Particles everywhere, lag everywhere, and we did manage to get a dark heart out of that. Over here, we do have some more sentinels. There are two different sentinels in total. Well, actually, three, if I'm correct. You got the black ones, you got the gray ones, and then you got the very big ones. The gray and uh, blue ones are mainly the small ones. You got a floating eyeball type of thing in your way as well, and that will complete the whole roster of enemies you will meet in here. And of course you got the boss, but that speaks for itself. You do have some wolves in here as well here in there Well, originally we have them I'm not completely sure if they are still here, but overall this dungeon is very very combat Full and that's something that's gonna stay in the future as well of this game like all the dungeons are always so full and I don't know. I don't know what to think of that. Oh, we actually got uh, these dudes as well I forgot the bigger ones we got some of the bigger ones, but the aggroing over on this game is actually more bad than the SBO one. Did anyone notice that? It's way more clunky. It's so much more clunky, but the dungeon overall is way more easy in the beginning. And then you are at the end. All you have to do is now just walk down a staircase, get the door open. The door should be fixed, if I'm correct. So you can now just use a lever to open the door again and just enter inside. If the door breaks out, well, you're out of luck then, matey. You're out of luck then, because you are not going to enter the boss room. And you're not going to unlock the next boss. So here we go. We're almost down the staircase. We're going to use our sprint ability. And just for showcase, see, you cannot enter anymore. You have to stand here. You have to just turn around, pull the lever, door will open, and ta da 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 da! That's it. Then you get this massive area over here where some of the decals and textures are indeed glitching right now. So that's something interesting to see as well because that did not used to be a problem. But it seems to be a massive, massive problem over here right now. So here we go. We got some of the gods over here and the boss is nowhere to be seen yet. Hello? Bossy? Hello? Hello? Where's the boss? Did the boss break? There he is, finally! So yes, he takes more time to spawn in, and this is the Thief King, originally you know, of course, as Ilfang as well, but for copyright notice he changed. And look at that! A max level in this game kills him in no time. So what do you guys think of that? I like the original in that more, because it takes more time. And then you got the teleport crystal over here, and then you can enter the next area. If you killed him or did more than 20% damage, counts for same in every version of the game. But anyway, guys, we're gonna move on towards a, a normal studio mode, and I will show you guys the small backdrop area. So right now, we are in studio mode, and it does seem like Slevin has secretly opened up this area over here, and mainly back in the day, you had to backwards walk 
all your way up on uh, one of these walls, like this wall, if I'm correct. Actually, you had to go up this wall. Then you had to fall down here. You had to climb up here again. Then you had to use your skill. Yes, you had to use your 200 skills when they used to be collidable to climb up here, jump down here, walk all the way over here, use uh, all your jumping skills you had. Then you had to go up here again, climb up here again, then use your skill or actually, yeah, you had to use your skill to get up there again. Then I had to go over here again, use your skill again to get up there. But from that point, you could already drop down if you want to. Then you got drop down inside this area over here. You want to climb up there and basically that's how you could see it. But this area used to be non, you know, lookable. And it used to be just one of the most prettiest areas in the map in my opinion. And I'm so sad to see that there are no secret mobs over here or anything like that. Because it is actually a very, very pretty area. Like, what do you guys think of that? Like, why are there so many unused areas? Areas where there could be so much potential. Also, there's a secret behind here, like back in the day where you could swim. You could fall under here, like in this area over here next to the boss star. You would fall under here, you would swim down, like exactly to the edge. Swim, 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 swim up again. Swim over here and stand here. You see all the people walking by, like, how do you get here? And the most fun part is the water drop sounds is right over here. Like, it actually has a part, this part has the sound, and it's just so amazing, and you could just swim away, go here, like, I'm gonna swim, and just explore a little bit of an area, you could actually also get on top of this area, because back in the day, this was a non-accessible area, and looked completely different, so that was a lot of changes, but also cool to see that we now finally can get up here, because this used to be a non-enterable area as well, unless you could find a way up by glitch climbing but now you can go up here and just look over the awesome landscape so that's awesome to see as well but anyway guys if you want to see more of this awesome series and of course make sure cast your vote which floor is better SBOs or SB2s keep in mind SBOs from 2014 slash 15 and this one is way more up to date but anyway guys everyone please add me 3 to 1 Peace out. Yeah, and we'll see you all in the next part. Woo!